Hi guys, welcome to the new 3D quick tip video. Today we will focus on a move, rotate and scale tool settings. If you missed the last videos about pivot orientation or snapping, be sure to check them out. I will link them over here and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you will keep up with the features we already covered. All the settings we will talk about could be found in the tool options by double clicking the tool over here or in the modeling toolkit or mainly in the marking menus which are accessed by holding W for move and left mouse button, E for rotate and left mouse button or R for scale and left mouse button. Let's begin with the move tool. Intentionally I'm not talking about the symmetry today, we will cover it in a separate video but we will start with the probably most useful feature in this options or a menu and that's the transform constraints and we will begin with the edge slide if I turn that on you can see it turned on in here and in here if I go to the component selection there is where the edge slide works and let's say select this edge loop and move it you see on the silhouette over here that the edge is actually sliding on the edges. If I turn that off and do the same thing, you can see the deformation. This is very useful when you want to shuffle around your topology while maintaining the shape. In the newer Mayas, you can hold shift and control and it will turn that edge slide automatically. You see that the icon changed. It's not turning on over here, but it's working. So if I hold control and shift and move, the slide works. So I'm not going into this menu anymore. However, for the surface slide, you still have to go there. So I will choose the surface slide and it's basically the same thing. However, it's not snapping just to the edges. It's snapping to the surface of your mesh. It's snapping to the polygon itself. It even works with a polygon, so if I select the polygon over here and just move it around, you can see that it still sticks to the surface all the way. Once again, this is very useful when you are tweaking your topology without changing your shapes. Together with these two options, there is one feature I use all the time and that's the preserve UVs because let me open the UV editor and zoom into the area because if I right now I will change the background so you see it a bit better turn off the image here if I move it right now and move it super close to this edge UVs are not updated and this polygon will be super stretched and this will be very compressed. That's why we have the preserve UV option in here. If I turn it on and do the same thing again and release, the UVs are updated right now. Even if I do it with just one vertex and move it, the UVs are updated. So you are basically sliding the vertex on top of your texture and your texture won't change, it won't be stretched whatsoever. So this is very, very helpful feature when you are tweaking your topology. So that was transform constraint and preserve UVs. Let me turn this off again and change the background back to our beautiful gradient. And let's go to next option, which is smart extrude and smart duplicate. This is actually a feature taken from 3ds max i guess originally and uh, it's very simple when you hold shift you see the clone tool active and when i move the object it will make a duplicate if you turn this off in here smart duplicate it even with holding shift that clone doesn't work nice thing is that when you hold it once and do a duplicate and then press a shift D to make another duplicate. It will maintain the transform you did with the first clone. That means you have the uniform spacing between your duplicates. 
The smart extrude over here works in the similar fashion. So if I go to edges, select this edge border and hold shift and extrude, it will make an extrusion based on my movement. So that's smart extrude, smart duplicate. You can turn that off if you accidentally trigger it when you are modeling. The next pretty useful feature is preserve children. To demonstrate it, I need to build a bit of hierarchy, or build a little hierarchy, just make a little hierarchy, just move the tongue under the body by pressing P. If I select the body right now and move the body, you can see that the tongue is following. But if I select the body and turn on the preserved children, the child, which is a tongue, will stay in place, even though I move the parent away. And that's everything this option does. Uh, but it's really useful. I use it quite often in production. All the other features we'll talk about are not used that often, but all of them has their own purpose or the case of use. The first one is the keep spacing. That actually works just with the component. So let's say I have a vertex selection like this and the keep spacing is turned on and I will just use a vertex snap by holding V and snap to this vertex, to this vertex, to this vertex. It's doing what you kind of expect. If you turn off the keep spacing and do the same thing, it will snap all the vertices to that point. It won't retain the relative spacing between these vertices. So that's a keep spacing. Sadly, this feature doesn't work with the object selections. If I want to snap this into the grid, even though the keep spacing is turned on, all the components were snapped into the grid based on their pivot point. So the easiest solution is if you want to snap this into like a grid center is to select everything, group it by pressing command G, center it and then snap it to the grid. So that's a bit annoying that the keep spacing doesn't work with the object selection. Then we have a snap menu over here. First of all, the face center and the vertex is actually snapping to the vertex and the face center of a live object. And we talked about that before in the video about snaps. So check that out. And then we have a discrete move. So if I turn that on, it's not called discrete move over here. It's called step snap. Let me increase that value to at least 10 and move the head. And it's basically snapping to the increments of 10, as you can see here in the channel box. Right now it's set to absolute. If I set it to relative mode and change this to like 12 and like 12 and a half and move, it will add 10 to it. However, if it's back into the absolute mode, it will snap to tens. So that's the difference between the relative an absolute over here and the discrete move. And that's almost all covered for the move tool. We have a tweak mode in here, which when active, you don't see your gizmo in the viewport. And when you just hold the left mouse button and move, you will move your object in a screen space. This is kind of meant for little tweaking here and there, but I honestly, I never used it. Same goes with the update tray out, which actually doesn't work with the move tool. It works with the uh, rotate. And then we have a move options, which opens and closes this dialog. There's everything for the move tool and let's jump on the rotate. Most of the features in the rotate menu are almost the same, except for that they are slightly on a different place. We have a discrete rotate in here, which does the same thing you can see over here just iterates over the value of 15 or if I turn that off slightly rotate it turn it on again and turn on the relative which is over here in this case it just adds to the value the discrete mode could be 
actually activated by holding a J key. So if I so if I don't have a discrete more active and just hold J, you see it turning on over here and it snaps into place. So J key, very useful. It works with all the tools, with the rotate, see it here, with the move, the same thing. The next option is a rotate center. Let me select all the objects. And when I rotate, each one of them is rotating based on their pivot point, which is in the center of the geometry. That's usually what I don't want, if I, especially if I'm rotating something like this. When I turn it to rotate object center, nothing's gonna happen because that actually works just with the components. And that means that if I select components like the vertices over here, my rotate center is still in the center of the object. If I turn it off, it's centered in the center of the selection. So how do I rotate when I'm in the object mode based on the center? That's actually not in the marquee menu, which is a bit annoying, and it's in the two options over here. So right now we are on default, and default in this case is the same as the object, as the center of the object. But right now, if I switch it to Manim, which is a manipulator, it actually rotates based on where the manipulator is. Same with the selection. Right now, it, it actually rotates based on the selection. Same goes with vertices. Right now, it goes around the selections. Set it to object, it rotates based on the center of the object. And there is not much left in the rotate menu. We have a free rotate, which when turned off, you cannot just drag into these empty spaces to rotate your object. You have to rotate it with the axis handles, or there's a screen space axis handle. If you turn on the free rotate, you, you see that it turns gray when you roll over it, and you can just drag into this empty space in between axes and rotate it based on that. And then we have a tweak mode, once again the same as on the move tool when you, the, <clears throat> the gizmo will disappear and with just the left mouse button you will slightly rotate, never use it, it's just a bit confusing which direction it's gonna rotate. Then we have preserve UVs, preserve children, which is exactly the same as with the move tool and relative that we already talked about together with the discrete rotate. So let's jump on to the last one and that's a scale. Scale is very very similar to the rest except for the discrete move or discrete rotate we have now snap scale which once again snaps right here to 1 let's set it to 0.25 and scale as you can see it iterates over once again, if you hold J, it turns off and on the same way. And the relative value and absolute value is right now over here on a different place again. Then we have scale object center. Once again, exactly the same as on the rotate. If I turn it on, doesn't work with the object. It works with the component selection. If I select the component, the scale is still in the center of the object. If I turn it off, it's in the center of the selection. If I want to scale the objects, not the components, I have to switch it to the manip manipulator and the scale now works with entire selection. Once again, this option is not in the marking menu. Then we have prevent negative scale, which is quite useful. Once again, doesn't work with the objects. You see, if I drag it, the scale value goes into the zero. However, if I scale components and try to go to the left, it won't allow me and it will just flatten the object. It's particularly useful when you are dealing with a symmetry axis. So you just can scale it and it will snap exactly flat if the preserve negative scale is turned on like let's say this edge and just make it perfectly flat so that's preserve negative scale 
Then we have preserve EVs once again, preserve tunnel once again, and tweak mode once again. So nothing new for the scale. And that's it. Today we just quickly run through the move, rotate, and scale tool settings. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to receive all the updates and follow me on social media if you know what else I'm working on and see you next time.